Block explorers and meta venture shops and sub merchanting and all of this, it's becoming massively prevalent. After some big pushes from the Upland team on uh, cars and ornaments and, and everything in between, I mean, it kind of makes sense as to why they're becoming so big too. Hey there, John Henry here, SSFTG. Welcome to the video. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome, my friend. I hope to earn your like and subscription today. The ability to submerchant is an incredible way to create more cash flow within the Upland metaverse. Submerchants initially started out for sports legits, which first, you know, okay, cool, whatever. But, you know, I guess it's not really my jam is with sports stuff. If I'm buying sports m memorabilia and things, I'm buying it to collect, not to flip and trade. Now, I know for some folks, that's literally the whole reason they play Upland is for NFLPA legits and their score and all of that, which, awesome, more power to them, but that's not really my jam. I buy them to collect them, but if I want to find, you know, other alternatives that we can use submerchanting for, like Block Explorers as an example, well, a little bit of a different game. After a great period of success with legits and all of that fun stuff, it expanded out to block explorers with meta ventures, and really there just weren't that many. And a lot of people didn't want to travel halfway across the map because at the time we were releasing cities in other areas and nobody wanted to head back that way because we were busy elsewhere. So it was kind of difficult to gauge how they were actually doing, but those times are now gone. They're adding more and more and more meta venture shops and more and more people into the beta program because later this year the beta program program is supposed to be ending and basically anybody will be able to open their own meta venture shop or at least that's the assumption for me block explorers rather than nflpa legits and all that other stuff those are a bit different for me right with nflpa stuff and, and fan things i'm doing that to collect it and hold on to and probably never get rid of right you hang them on the wall if you will but as an example, block explorers, those are NFTs, just like legits, but they've been talking about more things coming into the future with training your block explorers for racing and different traits that different block explorers may have. And that's a really, really big deal, right? That becomes a very important tradable asset. Now, the Block Explorer, along with Legits and, and everything else, those are all NFTs. And with NFTs, they're going to have mint numbers. For some folks, having a low mint or like the first one out of 500 or something like that is a really big deal. And people will hunt for value just based on mints. Other people, they don't really care, right? Other people just want the Block Explorer because it looks cool or because it had a specific trait. These are the types of things that we're going to have to consider going forward. With Upland, the mint number is randomly assigned, meaning that you won't know which mint that you get until after you receive it. And this can be kind of confusing at first, because if you were first in line, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get mint number one. This can be kind of frustrating at first, but when we kind of dig into it and understand, it creates a true fairness through randomness. Now again, some folks are going to like that and others don't, right? That's just how it is. But for me, I really like it because to me, honestly, it gives everyone a fair shot. It makes it so that if somebody is in at work and they can't get out of work for the next couple hours to join in a sale, they're not screwed out of the, the potential of getting number one. They could possibly still get number one because it's random. Another example of this, I was actually able to purchase the orange SUV, uh, but if I go into my assets, I don't have any vehicles in here yet, right? It's not, it's not in here, and that's because they haven't been minted yet. I know that my purchase is going to be one of between 4 and 20. Like right here, I can see that it shows I'm going to get the mint between 4 and 20. But I have no idea which mint that I'm actually going to get until it lands in my account. Within the Upland Metaverse, there are a few different kinds of NFT mints to be aware of. As an example, the first mint will actually have a tag that says first mint, and that's going to be obviously the first one minted out of a batch. So if there were 500 of them, and you were lucky enough to get the random generated number one, then you would have the first mint. The other cool thing that Upland has added is the Closer Mint, which is the final one. We've talked about before how NFT collectors and buyers and traders, sometimes for the lols or for the memes, will buy the last mint, the 1,000 out of 1,000. Because it's funny, right? It's like, oh man, that guy got messed up. You got the last one, really? And so people will go out of their way to purchase those because it's a funny portfolio to have. And that adds an inherent value to them because now Upland took it a step further and added a tag to them that says closer on it so that you know it was the last one. 
All right, so the first mint is like the one of 100. The closer mint is the 100 of 100. There is one extra one though, the splitter mint. And this is a little bit of an oddball, literally, kind of a bad pun. The splitter is the midpoint of the run, or to be more concise, as it was described to me by one of the, our Discord members in the Woodhood Discord chat. By the way, if you're not in the Discord chat yet, get in there, because it's an incredible community that's growing in huge amounts every single day. But they described it to me in a way that a coin collector, which NFTs, minting coins, minting coins, it fits, right? When you're minting coins, if you were, you know, minting in the middle, nobody's going to care about the middle of the batch unless it was with a new die. That new die would be the splitter. That's when the things changed and it split over into the new part, right? It's still the same run, but it's that new batch. Now, in this case, with NFTs, there's no, like, new die that they have to punch it out with. So, in that case, because of the way that it works, they just call that first one of the second half the splitter. Now, as a number value, it would be, like, the third one on a five run. One, two... Then we go on to the next one, which is a splitter, three, that's the middle, and then we go into four, five. Hunting for Black Explorers is getting easier and easier too, especially as things open up more and more. And the one that I use personally, at least for right now, is the upixland.me Black Explorer search. And you can do this by going to upixland.me, going into Meta Ventures, and then clicking All Black Explorers. That will get you into the page that we're looking at here, and then you can kind of go forward from there. I will say this ahead of time, although I am an absolute huge fan of upixland.me and basically everything they offer, this does feel like it's still relatively new and kind of clunky, so bear with it, right? This is all brand new stuff. Meta Ventures and Submerchanting and all of these new shops, I mean, it's going to take some time to get caught up with, but it kind of feels that way a little bit. There's a few little weird anomalies that we've got to do, so I'll talk about those along the way just so that you know, but in future after these are updated and things get a little bit more strange, streamlined, we probably won't have to worry about some of these steps. Now, the first thing that we have to do before doing any searching, any hunting, or anything is kind of figure out what it is that we are trying to accomplish. What are we hunting for? Are we hunting for the low mint one of one rares? Are we hunting for the named splitters, closers, first mints, etc.? Or do those not really matter so much and we're really just kind of hunting for underpriced or missed price, mispriced? However, that's supposed to come out mispriced explorers as well. For me, you know me, I love getting a good deal. So I don't necessarily care too much about the rarity unless it just so happens to be a great pickup at a great price. For me, I'm going to care, at least for now, more about having the Block Explorer that could be mispriced or underpriced at the time. A nice flip for profit, if you will. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is modify our search fields a little bit in how I want to look for them. And the way, the easiest way to do it is to kind of wake the search feature up. Again, some of these things are kind of clunky. But if we set this to descending and then set it back to ascending, that will get it all sorted properly. But there's a little bit of a caveat because the first listings you're going to notice if you click on them are going to show you in USD, which by the way, $15.74 is basically what that, I, I believe those were $15 when I bought mine. So that's basically at cost. That's incredible that they didn't, it just doesn't even lose value. Um, what an incredible store of value. Either way. So we're going to start out in USD, but that doesn't help me if I'm hunting for Upix. So it's kind of, a, again, these are the clunky things that will probably get updated, but there are no ways to search for Upix or USD or anything like that. So instead, what I do is I go to around page 40, and that's where we see all these really expensive ones. And then we can just page right until we see ones that we're familiar with, right? So if we go over, over, oh, now we're starting to see these. Now see, this is a heart, a heart, a chocolate, a heart. These are obviously, something's changed. These aren't these crazy one-ofs all over the place. So if we look at this, this first one, yep, sure enough, this is in Upix. Let's go left to make sure that this is correct. And the next one is 10,500 USD. So this is, this is the first one and cheapest one in the entire game that they have right now sitting at uh, Stand With Ukraine, 22,627 Upix. Now, another cool thing that this shows you, aside from the the price and all of that, and this includes the fees, it gives you the description and what it is, but it also tells you what mint number it is, when it was minted, and along with that, what shop it's in, right? So this one's in D Explorer. Now, you'll notice it says in 
blank. Nothing, right? There's nothing there. This is probably going to be one of those things that gets updated in the future, but right now, this can be kind of a stumbling point for people. The easiest way, and I'll try to remember to get that link down at the bottom, but it's using the Google Docs MetaVenture Raid Shop list. This is the list that Upland launched that has all of the MetaVenture shops with the updated ones. Now, again, as things get updated, I doubt this one's going to be the one that gets updated, but at least for now, this will give you an idea as to where some of these are. As the search features get better in Upixland.me, I'm sure this will become even easier, but for right now, this is what I've been doing. So if I want to find this explorer, I need to find DE Explorer in my list. I'll use control F because I want to make my life easier and we'll use DEX. See if we find it. There it is right there. This tells me right out of the gates. It's in Nashville. It's at this address at 115 9th Ave South. And that is the shop name. So if we go over here, I should be able to go into my search glass, drop that in there and hop on over. That is, <laughs> that's definitely not the right state. Let's try that again. Nash. Get that on over there. Now it should hone in on an orange dot because that would be the meta venture, right? And there is D Explore. Now, here's the thing when we're talking meta venture shops, because this is something of a caveat that you're going to need to understand. If you buy something, well, first off, you can't even buy from this shop. Like if I go in here, because right now I'm in San Francisco. So if I go in here and I look for the cheapest one, where was it? Where's the cheapest one? Stand you right there. So this is the cheapest one in all the whole of Upland. This is the cheapest Upix based lock explorer there is. So if I go in here and I click buy, it'll look like, yeah, I can do it. Awesome. And then it'll come here and it'll say, wait a minute, you can't do that. You have to be in discovery range. This is where the real life elements of Upland really start creeping in. Just like we have to travel via airplane or bus or train. Well, if I want to buy something from a shop, I can't do it with a metaphysical arm that I can stick out of my brain. I have to be there. This is the exact same concept, right? We have to be there to actually purchase them. So if I want to go and purchase this, I have to head to Nashville to get a hold of it. Now, for me, somebody who's hunting these cheap, undervalue out of price things that could be a little bit of a stumbling point because right now it's in san francisco it's going to take me 20 30 40 minutes to get there via plane and i might not get there in time before somebody else snags it so there is a little bit of an element of scarcity and speed that is needed here now, the other thing that I like to do going back into the block explorers is going through page by page and seeing which one isn't normally on the list, right? Like if I'm going over here, we've got the heart, we've got the heart, we've got the chocolate heart, we've got the Mother's Day stuff, macaroni hearts, all of that. And then the mustache, right? Now the mustache, that's the first one that I've seen, right? If we go to the next page, there's no mustache there. There's no mustache there. There's one right there. The next one's 33,600. Now, in this case, it's not a huge price difference, but it gives me an idea of one that I might want to hone in on. So if I were searching for a specific one, make sure that you know at least part of the name and start typing it in. Moustache. And then it'll give you the first one. Now, remember, because we reset the search results, it's going to start back over in USD. So we're going to have to go down and find it. This one's 105, 157, 27,300. So there we go. This is the cheapest mustache in the game. 27,300 and that is located at Bucksplorers and again I don't know where that is right now so let's jump on over BUCX should be good enough BUCX there it is right there right in Los Angeles 390 West 8th Street apartment 304 San Pedro it's, I love this resource super super handy to have this spreadsheet same thing I can take the address copy it over go on over into that one because this one I'm in San Francisco I could get to Los Angeles relatively quickly it wouldn't take me very long to get there so this might be one that I could possibly be interested in double check that it's still there we'll go into the list and we'll start scrolling our way down now this is something that I am really frustrated that there's no obvious search feature for this but if you scroll down and get the list to start filling up so you're all the way to the bottom now, in this case, I can kind of cheat because it's the last one and it's right there and I don't need to search for it. But let's say as an example that it's buried in here and I can't find it to save my life. Hold down control on your keyboard and hit the F key, like function F, find, because we're finding it. And then I can type it in. So mustache, and it will search all of them in the shop with mustache in the name. Now, it's important to note, though, that I have to have scrolled all the way down to the bottom for it to search the entire store. Otherwise, that might not work. So as we can see, and hopefully this guide kind of shows you how to do it as well if you're not familiar with it, hunting for block explorers actually 
really isn't that hard. And with really, really super, super useful websites like upixland.me that are allowing us to be able to search for these block explorers, which I don't, I, I don't know of any other website that's allowing us to search for block explorers very well. If you know of them, drop them in the comments because I love having more resources at my disposal. And if I know about them, I can talk about them so everybody else knows about them too. So drop them in the comments if I missed a store or a website or something that allows us to see these a little bit easier. But this is the easiest way that I know of right now, at least, to hunt for these block explorers. Hopefully this guide kind of shows you how I do it and how things go and how easy it actually is. It's not that tough. If you have any questions, though, because there are some steps in here, and depending on what you want to do, it's pretty easy to get lost along the way. Just drop those in the comments area as well. You know I always love hearing from you. Until the next one, though, enjoy, rest up, thanks for watching, and we will see you all in the metaverse. Bye.